Hello, Kumanti Shinai here from the Topic of the Week video, and I should finish the Christmas topics. So, the last topic for Christmas month is submitted by Angel89 on the Discord, and her topic is Detractors say Shion is a Mary Sue, or how she breaks canon, or is a terrible character who contributes nothing to the story and adds nothing, or how she's useless and a weak character. What do you think about the criticisms and even downright hate leveled at Shion? Is it warranted? What are your thoughts on her character and what she adds overall not to just days, but the franchise in general? Oh boy. <laughs> as I was going through the Kingdom Hearts game and I was I was playing them, and especially as, as I was going into days, I started seeing a lot of hatred leveled at Shion. And it wasn't it wasn't the kind that people explained it. It usually was more of the, I hate her, she's the worst thing ever, she destroys canon, and it was just, it was very, like, venomous hatred, and I was thinking, well, that's weird. I even, I even had some people messaging me, basically telling me that I was supposed to hate Shion. And this was before I even got into Days, like, proper, and was playing, and I'm like, well, I don't want you telling me how I think about a character. And I even saw the claim that if you play Kingdom Hearts 2 before Days, you will automatically hate Shion, which is weird because all of my friends who are, who are into Kingdom Hearts, who are the ones who got me into Kingdom Hearts, uh, they play Kingdom Hearts 2 before Days and they like Shion, so I'm like, well, that's just weird. And... I even, even some people just uh, effectively tried to argue with me that I was supposed to hate Shion. I'm like, it was so, it was so weird. And a lot, of, like, and a lot of times they didn't even give reasons. It was just, I don't like her. She's bad. But, but ultimately, I, I said I wanted to reserve judgment for Shion. To for when I play the game, I like I want to see Shion. I don't want I don't want to get spoiled, you know. For stuff, I mean, I I did know stuff going into days, but I didn't I didn't know everything. So I'm like, okay, right, I want to judge it on my own. So I played days, and I really like Shion. I mean, I I played Kingdom Hearts two before days, so and I was just like, I don't know what this weird dichotomy of you have to either like Roxas or Sheen, you can't like both. And I'm like, well, that's, well, that's weird. I like both. A lot of people I see like both of them. So I think it's probably just a segment of the fandom that just really hates Sheon. And all, especially after, um, after they started screeching how she destroys canon, I ended up just jokingly referring to Sheon as the destroyer of canon whenever I was, uh, you know, posting about her, it, it was sarcastic because, like, no, she doesn't destroy anything. So, obviously, I'm just going to make it clear, I will be getting into spoilers for Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Just fair warning going into this. Uh, first, before I actually get into, like, the whole character stuff, the whole she's a useless and weak character bit, yeah, I don't know how you, you would come away from days thinking that, especially considering she quite literally matches Roxas in power. And Roxas is very strong. I thought, I don't know, that's, that's just weird. Like, she's weak. No. She's literally not. She's the final boss. Like, <laughs> You have to fight Shion. And yeah, there's a multi phase boss battle to that. And yeah, she's not just a pushover. So yeah, uh, no, that's that that's definitely wrong. She may have been weaker when she started, but that's, you know, like when she first came into existence. So Yeah, of course she's not going to be as strong, but she does end up getting stronger. I mean it's all part of the plan from Organization 13, but yeah, no, she's not weak. Now, specifically to what she adds to the story, she actually adds a lot to Roxas's story. Now, when you play Kingdom Hearts 2, 
you only get brief snippets and, you know, after the fact, talkings about Roxas's time in Organization 13. You never actually see... Okay, you, you do see little bits, that's what I mean. You see little bits, but you don't see the whole thing. There's, a, there's an entire year that he was in Organization 13, and we never actually see it. I mean, we see him leaving Organization 13, but we don't actually have any context for that. Days provides that. Now, what I really like with Xion, and this is actually something that Days does really well, you come to understand why Roxas would get so fed up and leave. Like, honestly, playing Kingdom Hearts 2, you're like, okay, why? Like, what, what, what's the, what was the catalyst that really led to this? I mean, we, get, we only get little brief bits in there, and this is one of the reasons I really love Days, is that it, it fills it. it. It's like going back, and it's like, okay, during this time, this is what Roxas was doing. And a lot of it's kind of like menial tasks. But it makes, it makes sense. It's very much like the day-to-day. -day. Like, they're all working towards the eventual goal that Xemnas wants in Kingdom Hearts 2. They're going in, they're defeating a lot of shadows, and, you know... Doing that stuff, a lot of times it's revisiting worlds that we've seen in other games, and a lot of times setting things up for things that will happen in Kingdom Hearts 2, which is really neat. I like seeing the little bits, like especially if there was an Organization 13 member that appeared in a world, they'll be there doing some reconnaissance and be like, ah, oh, okay, so yeah, that's why they're going to be there for, you know, later in Kingdom Hearts 2. So it does a lot of setting up for Kingdom Hearts 2. But particularly relating to Roxas, um, Axel and Shion are used to great effect to understand why, one, he would leave the organization, and two, why trust is such an important thing to Roxas. Even if he didn't actually have all of his memories at the beginning, it's just something like deep in his core. Because you realize, going through uh, days... Roxas is lied to a lot, including Axel, you know, his supposed best friend. And you have Axel, Roxas, and Xion forming this little trio. And trios are a thing across the series. You know, you got the Destiny Island trio, you got the Wayfinder trio, and you got, you know, the Sea Salt trio. You know, you, trios are something that, like, is consistent. So, having Xion be added to Axel and Roxas' friendship, to form a trio. It's not like it's a big stretch for what the series does. And uh, Xion sp uh, particularly is used a lot in, you know, the schemes of Organization 13. And, you know, a lot of lies center around her and, you know, specifically her origin and her eventual purpose. You know, and, they've, and all the things they want to do with her. So, yeah, you understand why Roxas gets so pissed off and fed up because of all of the lies, especially, especially from Axel, someone who he's been friends with for so long and someone who he, one of the people he's closest to. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Shion's pretty vital in a lot of that. So, yeah, she does actually add to the story and very much justifying why, you know, Axel, or not Axel, but Roxas left, and why he's not particularly happy with the organization. Then, of course, there's probably going to be people going, well, the, why wasn't she ever mentioned in the other games until, you know, like, you get to Kingdom Hearts 3, and it's actually, you know, a plot point that she comes back. People's memories were messed with. Which isn't out of norm, which isn't uh, out of place in Kingdom Hearts. Because memories and memories being tampered with is actually something that's happened multiple times. I mean, Nominate's whole shtick in, you know, Chain of Memories, I mean, a game called Chain of Memories, was that she was rewriting Sora's memories and she was manipulating, you know, memories in that. And then there was a period of time where pretty much everyone forgot Sora. Because of memory manipulation. So, when every when Xion disappeared at the end of Days, it's a plot point that they don't remember her. You mean, 
Roxas, who was a close friend of hers, doesn't remember her. Uh, Riku, Riku actually had several, you know, significant, you know, scenes with Shion and, you know, helping her come to terms with, well, what she is, is a part of Roxas and a part of Sora. And, you know, ultimately, you know, getting her to choose the, the, the ultimate choice that she's going to need to effectively lose her individuality herself in order to rejoin with Roxas, to rejoin with Sora, so that Sora can be properly, um, can be properly made. You know, or can have everything, you know, his memories properly, you know, reforged by Namine. Yeah, they end up forgetting her, and it's a plot point. And it's funny because it's all, it's, I would say that, yeah, the existence of Xion, I doubt that was planned, like, back when they were doing Kingdom Hearts 2. But Kingdom Hearts has this, like, Nomura and the rest of the team, they just have this interesting way of incorporating retcons and making them feel good like it feels natural like it feels like oh yeah of course we didn't learn about her there because everyone's m memories were altered and they forgot Shion. And in fact you know like in kingdom hearts 3 there's a some parts where um axel will have like flashes of memory like, there's a particular moment um when he's training with uh kairi where he he sees Kyrie and she says something that uh, that Shion said to him during days, and he flashes this vague image of Shion, and he starts crying because he doesn't know why. Because well, deep down he he, he knows you know that was Shion and Shion's gone, but he didn't understand because of his memories. And I I like how they because it, it, it addresses that it it brings it up and of course then later they remember Shion and you know then the sea salt trio will you know, reunited at the end of the game and it's it's all oh my gosh we're all we're all happy and crying but it all feels like it works out like Kingdom Hearts is clear Kingdom Hearts obviously is a series full of retcons like. Pretty much every game has introduced something, something that clearly wasn't intended from the very beginning. But it all works out, and I feel like a lot of times, a lot of Kingdom Hearts isn't taken too seriously. It, it still has a good story and all, but a lot of Kingdom Hearts is pretty, like, loose with that stuff because a lot of ridiculous stuff happens it's a series that works with the power of friendship and i feel like it it strikes a nice balance with the you know oftentimes you know the more serious and grand scale of kingdom heart or of a uh, final fantasy with the more you know magical whimsical stuff of disney i mean shoot um the Aqua being involved in the finale of Kingdom Hearts 1. Yeah, I doubt that was planned when they did Kingdom Hearts 1. But it actually works out because it does provide more context. Especially with the fact that when Mickey uh, gets attacked, his shirt just is destroyed. Because he wasn't wearing this shirt at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. So they gotta explain that. And Shion, Shion is a lot like that. Is Clearly, I doubt that when they were making Kingdom Hearts 2, that they specifically had planned out the story of, of you know, of Shion. But it all ends up working out. Like, Nomura, the madman that he is, you know, sometimes it's, it's, like, sometimes you wonder, is he flying by the seat of his pants or is this all some big, you know, elaborate story that he's been planning out for years and he's just playing four-dimensional chess while we're still playing regular chess. I mean, shoot, you had, a uh, spoilers for Kingdom Hearts 3, but you you had Dream Drop Distance introduce uh, The World Ends With You, and then you had Sora die, basically, in the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, but then he appears in Shibuya in The World Ends With You. But the world ends with you. It involves the Reapers games, where people who are dead get a chance to come back to life. And you're like, wait, did 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 Nomura set up Sora's death 
by establishing the connections to The World Ends With You, which is another game that Nomura worked on. But then also using the fact that that involves people who died and get a chance to come back to life to use that for Sora to come back in a later game. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I mean, in a, especially uh, for Xion, I feel like the introduction of her character, even if she wasn't planned from the beginning, adds a lot, even if nothing else, to the context of Roxas's character and gives a much greater understanding of, uh, of his mindset, you know, post-day, like, you know, Kingdom Hearts 2. And... I, and it really, I, I just, I just really like the story of Days. I like the friendship between Roxas, Axel, and Shion. I liked learning about Shion, you know, being a split off from, from Roxas, who is Sora's shadow, basically being like memories of Kyrie formed into a, a separate person. So which is why she looks like Kyrie, but she's still a part of Roxas. Which is why sh shipping them is really weird. I really don't understand it. Because they're the same person. They're, they're part of the same person. They're both part of Sora. I mean, she even has a speech at the end of Days where she says that. Like, you and I are both part of Sora. It makes shipping them weird. But, yeah, I mean... I can understand if people didn't care for Xion, which is perfectly fine if, if it's a character you don't really feel invested in. You know, that's fine. But this hate I've seen towards Xion is completely undeserved. I mean, I found her to be a rather likable character. Her interactions with Roxas, especially across the games, is great. And it really got a nice... Um, a nice conclusion when she was, you know, when she comes back in, uh, in Kingdom Hearts 3. It was great to see the, th you know, the three of them reunite as the sea salt trio. Because they need to go get ice cream together, of course. I mean, th I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff in Kingdom Hearts. Like, I like, honestly, I I underestimated a lot of the weird stuff in the fandom, but, uh, I mean, oof. <laughs> but, I mean, I still have a hard time understanding the hatred for Xion. It's such an, it's such an odd thing, you know? I mean, and sure, if you thought, oh, she's a retcon, okay, well, yeah, even if she's a retcon. I mean, Nomura could have planned her from the beginning. We don't really know. I mean, maybe... I don't know if he's ever said anything about that. But yeah, I'm sure that she was a retcon. But she works. Retcons aren't inherently a bad thing. They, re they really are not. Because sometimes a retcon can improve a story. They also, in you know, have a danger of making things worse. But... As long as the retcon is good and adds to the story, in this case, that working to add context to Roxas' story and flesh out his backstory, I think that Xion is very much a net positive to the series. Well, I think that's about it for this topic. If you want to submit a topic to me, you can comment below if you're on YouTube or if you're on Tumblr, send me an ask, but topic colon, then whatever topic you want me to talk about. Or if you're on the Discord, you can go into the Topic Submissions channel and submit a topic there. Just make sure the follow rules I'll be posting down below. If you want to watch the last week's topic video, you can check that out here. If you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here when you get that done. So what are your thoughts on Xion? Please comment below. And thank you for watching.